All right. So, uh, without too much uh, preface, because uh, we all know who this is, we all know what we're here for. Um, Up yours, woke moralists. Oh, we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, the title of this video is Wicked Globalists Are Causing Starvation and Poverty Under the Guise of Environmentalism. And agreed, he does need more firewood. It, it, like, I don't know why he has such little firewood uh, in his chamber. <laughs> also, your tie is crooked, Jordan. Anyway, enough picking on him. We're going to listen to his, 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 his big-brained ideas. This winter, tens of millions of British citizens, including children, will be tipped or dumped into energy poverty severe enough to risk permanent damage to their health. Okay. Cold, damp houses provide the perfect breeding ground for mold that not only causes respiratory distress, uh -huh. but renders houses essentially unlivable. Okay. Why? And he, it's, he very specifically, like, help me out with this, Chad. He specifically said in the UK, right? That's what he's talking about? Once established. One left-leaning newspaper ran the story outlining the danger, but without a word about why this crisis has emerged. Nobody knows. Because the woke moralizers of the environmental movement Up helped yours, create it. Moralists. Oh. Starvation and poverty will not save the planet. Did anybody think that it would? <laughs> okay. Uh, hmm. The narcissists of compassion, callow, self-aggrandizing, incompetent politicians, their celebrity lackeys, Machiavellian journalists, have insisted ever more loudly over the last five decades that no cost was and is too great for others to bear in the pursuit of blind service to the planet. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, this is a this is a, a very fascinating, colorful way to uh, to start framing the issue. Uh, feels feels like he's uh, going to make, and I'm I'm just spitballing here. I could be wrong. Uh, it feels like he's going to be uh, making the case uh, that uh, being concerned about the environment is in some form a uh, a mass delusion or something. You know, uh, a a sneaky heretical concern. It is irresistibly tempting at the moment for those on that bandwagon to single out and demonize Vladimir Putin for Europe's energy woes, but his current machinations were utterly enabled by the green ideologues. Oh, I see. Putin doing a war is actually because of green, woke globalists. Uh, hmm. Anyone with eyes could see a decade ago that the idiot insistence that Europe make itself reliant on Russia for its energy security, made the current situation. Wait, no? <laughs> and also, green, woke, moralist, globalist, uh, I'm pretty sure I've been banging the drum about energy independence and embracing green technology. Not, uh, yeah, let's just rely on, uh, you know, the people, the people with the uh, authoritarian uh, dictator in, in all but name. Uh, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure. Inevitable. Mm. Remember when President Donald Trump, populist menace numero uno, was mocked and derided by the intellectual and political elite in Europe and North America for trumpeting precisely that warning? No, I don't remember that at all because that's not what happened <laughs> at all. <laughs> well, now the chickens have truly come home to roost, mm. but very little has yet been learned in consequence. Damn chickens. Virtue signaling utopians committed to globalization claim we are destroying the planet with cheap energy. Uh, we're destroying the planet with a lot of things. A lot of things. But it's also interesting that, that we're not... We're not we're not talking about a methodology of of making energy that we are just simply reliant upon now. It has to be cheap energy. Mm. 
But are they truly and deeply committed to the environmental sustainability so loudly and insistently demanded? Mm. Or are they merely hell-bent in the prototypically Marxist manner in taking revenge on capitalism? <laughs> really, this is just a grudge match. See, like... It, this is all because the shadowy woke cabal, whoever the fuck that is, uh, are are just still so darn they're scuffed. They're scuffed over capitalism. So so we we need to uh, uh, start paying attention to the fact that we're impacting our climate. <laughs> it appears to be the latter. <laughs> Why otherwise would the mavens of the environmental movement oppose? Nuclear power. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for that. There's actually innumerable reasons for that. But uh, one of the easiest ways that we can uh, break it down is very simple. Um, from things like Chernobyl, Three Mile Island, Three Mile Island, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and other uh, potential. Oh shit, uh, Fukushima. There is concern and panic and alarm uh, about a nuclear energy. Um, a lot of that at times has been traced back to the fossil fuel industry, fanning the flames of paranoia and fear about nuclear. And people buy into it because uh, it's scary. Now, they shouldn't, and people who actually do give a shit about the environment do tend to advocate that we need to switch until we can get into even greener uh, types of energy production. It would be better if we switched completely over to nuclear and got rid of all fossil fuels. I am one of those. A lot of people are like me. Yeah, yeah, but uh, <laughs> you're, uh, yeah, Trump didn't propose, yeah, Trump didn't propose nuclear. He was like, I like coal, clean coal. I'm a big fan of clean coal, you know? He wasn't trumpeting fucking nuclear, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's not going to mention that. Despite its optimal carbon footprint, sure. why would they demonize the exceptionally clean natural gas Jordan, come on. Whose fracking-enabled production has allowed the U.S. to dramatically cut the very carbon output that is so hypothetically undesirable. And poisoned the shit out of groundwater and <laughs> done huge ecological damage. It should be pointed out at this point that uh, Jordan has been paid by the fracking industry. Yep. Utility bills have soared in the UK, the home of the Industrial Revolution that lifted the world out of poverty. Now, up to half of small businesses in Britain face the risk of bankruptcy and closure. Mm. The government has had to announce a ruinously expensive energy price guarantee to mitigate the worst effects of this disaster. Sounds like a government doing what a government's supposed to do. Okay. The rush. And, and notice how, like... The, this whole possible crisis that we are facing, well, they are facing over there uh, due to the, the war in Ukraine, it's not because uh, of Russian imperialist uh, uh, endeavors. No. Putin was forced into it by the woke globalists because of green energy something, something, something. This is, this is brain rot. Wow. To renewables. The mentality among the eco-extremists is as follows. Huh. If we have to doom the poor to destroy the system that made the rich, so be it. You just can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. Nobody in the history of ever has ever said that. <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ. Here are some facts to remember. Mm. While we so madly and ineffectively rush to renewables. Okay, sure. The International Energy Agency recently indicated that two decades of intense support for such undertakings has hiked the proportion of energy provided by such means from 13 to 14% to an utterly underwhelming 15.7%. Uh -huh. If all governments deliver on their current climate policies, the world will derive no more than 28% of its energy that way by 2050. Yeah, that's not enough. That's bad. Also, do you have any citations? Hang on, hang on. Let's just... Uh... Oh, he has an article. Oh, he's referencing the Telegraph. Okay. He's referencing this article from the Telegraph. But does he have any citations? Mm, I don't think so. 
Maybe he's just maybe like this whole thing is just like him restating. Wow, this is a shit fucking website. To continue reading this article, uh, it's always you listen. Oh, and he wrote it. Oh, I would love to see if there's any citations, but I'm not signing up for this shit. I'm gonna see if I can open it in a different browser while we're uh, while we're watching this here. Uh, I'm just fascinated. Let's see. And a hundred percent by twenty two oh seven. Mm. Not 2030 or 2035, but 200 years later. Ah. Does anyone on the liberal left accept such projections? Or No, we need it to be better. Be better. Better, 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 better. Uh, the egg we're breaking, Mr. Peter shit is our bloody planet. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I can't seem to get past this paywall. Fascinating. Hmm. Hmm. Or are they a mere fabrication of the conspiratorial right-wing conservative imagination? Oh. How about the Biden administration? Uh Uh-oh. Biden's experts, no doubt motivated to be as optimistic as possible, project that a mere 27% of the energy produced by 2050 will be carbon dioxide free. Okay. And that full CO2 eradication cannot possibly occur until 2242. Yeah, that's, that's too late. Yeah, we need to do better. Yep. 2242. Mm -hmm. An even more dismal guesstimation, if you regard such realities as dismal, than that put forth by the International Energy Agency. But the tyrannical and emergency justified panicked crunch is not just happening in the UK. Uh Uh-huh. In Spain... Officials now dictate that commercial properties must not be heated above 17 degrees Celsius or cooled below 27 degrees Celsius upon pain of law. Okay. Yeah, things are bad. (laughs) Things are bad. I I don't... You're like explaining that things are bad and people are doing things to try and mitigate how bad things might be. Is the uh, do you want to take the other option, which is just don't worry about it and pretend it's not happening? What the fuck? In Switzerland, similar punishments are being considered as part of a proposed four-step plan for dealing with a gas shortage, which quote cannot be ruled out this winter given the geopolitical situation. Yeah, thanks, Russia. The citizens of Germany, likewise, are now in phase two of a three-stage emergency plan following a reduction in gas flows from Russia. Yeah, yeah. Why don't we blame Russia <laughs> for for this current crisis that Russia put us in? I, uh, th- <laughs> what the fuck, dude? It's main supplier. The plan involves bringing coal-fired plants onto the market, according to German minister Robert Habeck, despite them being, quote, simply poisoned for the climate. Yeah, they're not good. They're not good. It's one of those things like it's really not hard to understand the basic concept of this. Uh, invest in green infrastructure, invest in new renewables as much as possible. If you can't make that quota, embrace nuclear and don't just like close your coal plants because you never know when shit's going to be an emergency and you're like, fuck, we need to turn them on. But like, don't rely on them. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? And the potential of gas rationing for industrial companies so that supplies to homes and schools, etc., are not disrupted. Mm -hmm. The extended plan involves curtailing the Christmas lighting that constitutes part of the celebration in the midst of the winter darkness in many locations where they generally shine. Yeah, okay. So what? Hey, there's a crisis because on our fucking continent... There is a massive, brutal war being raged that's disrupting our lines of, of available, uh, you know, goods and necessities. So, hey, maybe we aren't going to get to turn on our Christmas lights this year. Oh, no. The fucking humanity. What the fuck? Nothing, either beautiful or pleasing, is acceptable in the least to the Grinches. And the Grinch was, in fact, green. <laughs> Do you fucking? <laughs> How do people take this fucking dumbass seriously? What the fuck? Oh my god! 
No, no, no fun allowed. No fun and no beauty. No, none. Cause woke, woke moral globalists. Up yours, woke moralists. Have decreed that you must live in suffering and cold and pain. And we could talk about how it's Russia's fault, but no, it's not. It's it's Russia's just a victim of the woke moral globalists. Fucking Jesus Christ. When confronted by the crisis, they created. Uh, see, they created it. Of course. How? Uh. Remember, when the aristocracy catches cold, the peasants die of pneumonia. If such extreme measures have become necessary in the richest countries, what in God's name is going to happen in the poorer ones? Like which ones? When the shortages strike, the poor will inevitably and necessarily turn to less green resources. Many, even in Germany, are already stockpiling firewood and coal for the winter, okay. leading to acute shortages. How is incentivizing people to cut down and burn trees and use coal in their fireplaces going to help reduce the dreaded atmospheric carbon load? These are not... Oh, my God, dude. This is insane. Is this going to be like 25 minutes straight of him being like, Awful things are happening because of Russia, but actually it's because of environmentalism. This is so fucking dumb. So fucking dumb. I'm going to get, we're going to go all the way to like, we're going to make it to 10 minutes of this video, okay? At the very least. And if he's still just doing the same exact fucking thing, we're tapping out because this is inane. And the worst part is, and this is what should really, really fuck you up, is that a very large chunk of people in the world think this is brilliant, the actual poor versus the hypothetical poor. Perhaps we'll be able to comfort ourselves here in the West with the thought that the food we take for granted will still be available at our tables. But wait, the crops that nourish our populations cannot be grown without fertilizer, loathed by green folk. Green people do not have a problem with fertilizer. I have no idea what the fuck he's talking about. They, they're, nobody has a problem with fertilizer. <laughs> what the fuck? And more specifically, without ammonia. And what, pray tell, is ammonia derived from? Could it be... Lots of stuff? Natural gas? No, you fucking moron. You can get it from so much shit. Oh, my God. He doesn't even know what the fuck he's talking about. Holy shit. What in the actual fuck? Oh, my God. And how many people are dependent for their daily bread on the industrial generation and consequent wide availability of ammonia? <laughs> Only three or four billion. Oh, my God. What happens? To yeah, he's equating, conflating green with non-GMO, which is absolutely fucking stupid and incorrect. Which, I mean, you know what's interesting? He releases this around the same time that his, his fucking butt buddy from the goddamn inter intellectual dork web, Brett Weinstein, was talking to Vandana Shiva. And, like, I, I just, it's so fucking crazy. They are absolutely embracing non-GMO talking points, or claiming that people are non-GMO and, and this, that, and the other thing. But I bet you, too, if pressed on it, well, they, and no, they are, they're absolutely into non-GMO because, like, obviously Vandana Shiva hates it as well. See, we're more green than you are, and it's it's incoherent. Uh, mm, here, I'll look at some of that real quick. All right. I just didn't want to miss a thing here. ...to the continuous production plants responsible for making ammonia if the natural gas supplies are halted, even momentarily. They destroy themselves as they were not designed for such an unlikely event, and they cannot be restarted. <laughs> the World Bank itself is... Why in the world is he claiming, too, that, like, ammonia... Because, okay, the thing is, if he's trying to equate that ammonia is the same thing as, like, natural gas, ammonia is an extremely basic chemical... It's a basic chemical that is produced from bacterial processes. Nature itself produces ammonia, okay? It's simple as that. Ammonia is also 
not like specifically everything we need for fertilizers and this, that, and the other. It's so fucking crazy. It's so dumb. Also, the world leader in producing uh, ammonia is China. China. And he doesn't like China, so I don't know why he is like advocating for ammonia. Because, uh, yeah, just saying. Recently indicated that 222 million people are already experiencing the threat of starvation. Described oh so nicely as food insecurity. Now it's true, industrial ammonia production emits more CO2 than any other chemical making reaction. Uh, but that is also something that is very specifically <coughs> being worked on by scientists to try and mitigate that and uh, make it uh, a lot less uh, damaging to the, uh, the surrounding environment. The communists managed to kill 100 million in the last century with their utopian delusions. Mm. We've barely begun to implement the save the planet nightmare, and we've already placed twice that number at risk. Oh. We are told an emergency confronts us, the climate crisis. The solution? The masses will have to tighten their belts. Hang on a second. Okay. Uh, 50% of the world's food production relies on ammonia fertilizer. Okay. Uh, however, uh, the, the carbon footprint of ammonia in agricultural use, in food production use, still only accounts for about 1% of global annual CO2 emissions. Now, that is still huge. It is large. Uh, but at the same time, like, compared to a bunch of other shit used together, it's, I mean, it's still, it's so fucking crazy. And also, what we could actually do to reduce carbon emissions uh, through reducing the need for ammonia-based fertilizers is GMOs. Could do it. To forestall an even worse future catastrophe. Mm. The elite academics, think tanks, and corporate... Yeah, it's not related to natural gas at all. The whole thing with, the, uh, with, with nitrate pollution and ammonia and shit. Yeah, yeah. It's, I don't know why the fuck he's tying it into natural gas. ...consultants and the politicians who subsidize their intellectual pretensions will not be particularly affected by such tightening... Mm. privileged as they are. Ah. But the actual poor? To such an elite, they must be sacrificed now to save tomorrow's hypothetical poor. And 222 million people is no doubt an underestimate. As the food insecurity gets more severe, more countries will place restrictions on food exports. Uh -huh. That will harm the international supply lines we all depend on. So we, it's interesting though, like I have yet to, to hear him talk about uh, what are the other barriers for food security right now, which is massive rising inflation. Uh, but then again, I'm sure he'd find a way to make that, uh, that's all, that's all about, uh, <laughs> that's all, that's all about the woke moralists and shit, you know, it's nothing to do with corporate profits because those are the people who pay Jordan Peterson. Uh, hmm. Hmm. We're almost at 10 minutes. We'll see if we're going to have to dab at, uh, dip out of this one. Then, when the consequences of that manifest themselves, increasingly desperate politicians will begin to nationalize and centralize food distribution, as the French and Germans have already done on the energy front, okay. and cut their farmers off at the knees. <laughs> Is who that will what in do? turn stop growing food, not out of spite, but because of dire economic impossibility. Then we will have engendered the kind of feedback loop that can really spiral out of control. It will be poor people who die first, at least. Mm. But as we have all been taught by the malevolent eco-moralizers, the planet has too many people on it anyway. <laughs> yeah, is this... It, wait, wait, oh, okay, we're going to go with this just a little bit longer because I want to see if this is going to get into some Georgia Guidestones, Bill Gates kind of fucking thing. Uh, talking about having to reduce the population or whatever. Uh, at least this is different. At least it's a little bit different. Let's try it. Think about this 
while you shiver all too soon in your cold, damp, and increasingly expensive and now substandard lodgings. <laughs> I will. I absolutely will. This is, this is so fucking doomered. This is wild. You and your family may well have been deemed an expendable excess. Food for thought. This is simply not acceptable. If you dare to claim the moral high ground while well, serving the cause of starvation, then, by my reckoning, you've placed yourself firmly in the enemy camp and you richly deserve whatever is coming your way. Wow. That is wild. This is one of the things that's been really interesting to watch as Jordan Peterson's brain melts is he has gotten into this like nature of being extremely combative about everything to the point where like you woke moralists who embrace this thing that I don't actually understand um, but I think is bad and the fracking company that has paid me has told me is bad. Uh, you might... Uh, feel like you're doing good or be on the right side of history. You might have positive feelings about things that I disagree with, and you deserve to be uncomfortable and maybe die. Like, he just doesn't give a fuck. The dude's just, like, absolutely uh, uh, turned into an extremist about this shit. It's wild. In the psychological and educational arenas, too, we demoralize young people, feeding them a constant diet of concretized apocalypse, focusing particularly on tempering or even obliviating the laudable ambition of boys, hectoring them into believing that their virtue is nothing but the force that oppresses the innocent and despoils the virginal planet. Okay, there was a lot there. Uh, <laughs> so now there's a psychological war uh, to 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 basically, uh, psychologically castrate boys, men into thinking that they are despoiling the environment, uh, and he's not the doomer; they are the doomer because they're trying to enact change before bad things uh, have already started to happen. Huh? Interesting. Yeah, virginal planet. Uh, Jordan Jordan wants to 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 fuck some dirt. And if that doesn't work, and it does, then there's always the castration awaiting the gender dysphoric. What did I just tell you? Wow. Now we're just, we're going from, actually, it was the green environmentalists that forced Putin to start a war with Ukraine, to uh, actually, environmentalism is also uh, about making you feel shame for being uh, a boy, and now it's going to cut your dick off because uh, transgenderism is part of the uh, woke moralist... Up yours, woke moralists. Uh, woke cabal globalism agenda. And you oppose such initiatives at substantial personal risk. Mm. But we can reassure ourselves with the fact that a beneficent government is going to set up warm spots in public libraries and museums this winter so that freezing, starving old people can huddle together to keep warm while their grandchildren cough up their lungs in their frigid, damp, and moldy flats. <laughs> They're going to shuffle all the old people in, in, into museums <laughs> and leave the children to, to get lung disease. This is fucking crazy. In such circumstances... In the face of such mandatory privations and manipulations, mm. it's obvious that the last thing our tyrannical, idiot, panicked, virtue-signaling governments should be doing is directing their demented attention toward regulating what people serve at their tables. But because meat has also been deemed yet something else that is destroying the planet, the woke narcissists of compassion are already insisting that people eat less of it. <laughs> First of all, that has yet to happen. There is quite a few people who are like, actually, look, agriculture and especially uh, animal ranching does do a lot of damage to the environment, and it's true, so maybe you should consider meat substitutes. Sure. And they're not wrong, but nobody's forcing you to do it. There are no artificial restrictions being placed on and forcing you to not be able to eat meat. Plants and bugs for you and your children. 
peasants. <laughs> Uh, I got to be honest with you. The moment anybody says like it starts going off about like eating the bugs, forcing to eat the bugs and things like that, I automatically think what's about to come out of your mouth is fucking dumb. It's uh, look, it is pretty simple. Like they, there are ways to produce shit tons of complex proteins using things like like fucking insects. Absolutely. Does that remind one a lot of like Snowpiercer and shit? Yeah, sure. I guess. But the science is still fucking sound. But also, nobody is forcing you to eat the bugs. Nobody. Nobody's doing that. What the fuck? You want lab-grown steaks at a reasonable price? Me too. I'd eat. I'd fucking eat them. Absolutely. Like fuck, dude. If you if you could make lab-grown meat or like or or like it's exactly the same as any other type of meat, and it's like a third the fucking price. You'd be an idiot to be like, oh, no, I'm not going to eat that. Why? Why not? What the fuck? And the sooner you get accustomed. Oh, no, I think eating the bugs is totally fine. <coughs> In fact, it might actually be a great solution to some issues. Absolutely. But it's this this thing that he's, he's, he's embracing this thing of like, they're going to force you to eat the bugs. And it's a dumb fuck thing to say. Custom to it or else the better. Let's turn our attention to the claim that animal husbandry and the meat it produces cheaply enough for everyone to afford is unsustainable. Uh, affordable meat? Affordable? Depends on what you're talking about. For a moment, because we haven't yet dispensed with enough moralizing and authoritarian stupidity. Oh, I see. So it's not about the science behind, uh, you know, raising tons and tons of cattle it's it's moral uh moral stuff okay sure remember what happened the last time that government agencies applied their tender mercy to determining what the people they serve should consume we were offered the much vaunted food pyramid telling us to eat 6 to 11 servings of grains and carbohydrates a day uh-huh with protein and fat at the pinnacle uh-huh. something to be indulged in with comparative rarity Okay. If indeed necessary at all. That all turned out to be wrong. <laughs> he says, uh, someone who eats literally nothing but fucking meat as his brain withers in his fucking skull. Look at this look on his face. Mmm, turned out to be wrong. I hate to tell you this, Jordan, but they've gone through so many iterations on what is the healthiest of diets and shit. I mean, it's true the food pyramid is bullshit. Yeah, it is. But you know it's not bullshit. You could quite easily live your entire life eating nothing but potatoes. It's it's one hundred percent true. Potatoes contain every single thing that you need in order to consume to maintain life. You could drink water and eat potatoes, and that's it. You could do that. You could totally do that. <laughs> you can't. I mean. It's it's so it's so fucking weird because like this this smarmy like mm, they were wrong about the food pyramid thing and like oh, okay who was they and not just a little wrong but so wrong that it might as well have been not just wrong but a veritable anti truth something as wrong as it could possibly get uh, the food pyramid was brought into being not least by the U S Department of Agriculture uh -huh. that is. By marketers, not scientists or nutritionists. <laughs> uh, I hate to tell you this, but the USDA is is it is one of the largest employers of food scientists on the fucking planet. So uh, you're wrong. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's this is really fascinating. No short. Also, uh, we, the, who was the president? Uh, this of the food pyramid. Uh, yeah, he was. Uh, who was the, the fucking president uh, during the food pyramid? Uh, oh yeah, George Herbert Walker Bush. Hmm. Whatsoever of lobby efforts by those whose products ended up being promoted. The dietary recommendation to prioritize carbohydrates produced a veritable epidemic of obesity and diabetes resulting in what has been deemed by reliable researchers as one of the worst public health disasters of all time. I am very curious to know where he's getting this. If not for all of 
I and I doubt there's even sources on the article. God, I've got a really good pause game. Look at this shit. Oh, it's so good. Oh, it's so good. It's so glorious. Can I make this even like is it in 4K? Nah, it's just 1080. Shit. 1422. Okay. Dooming almost the entire Western population to a lifetime of catastrophic chronic health problems. Mm. 42. Yeah, I would fact check it, but I, I'm not, I can't get through the soft paywall, you know. I guess I'm just, I'm not elite enough to be able to know your truths, Jordan. Percent of Americans are obese. Another almost equally large percentage are overweight. At least a third are in the early or later stages of diabetes. Oh, I might be wrong. It might, the, the potato exclusive diet is 12 years. Ah. Still, 12 years is pretty fucking good. Uh, and you have to eat sweet potatoes, yams, with the peel. Sweet potato with yams with the peel. I'm trying to sing like apple bottom jeans. It's not working. Fuck me. I'm getting bored with this. Let's go just a couple more minutes to see if he says anything else dumb. Betis, which is an exceptionally serious disease. Mm. $1.7 trillion is spent annually on chronic illness in the U.S. Okay. And the rise in such illness and cost is directly associated with the beginning of the godforsaken top-down dietary guidelines that set us all on a carbohydrate-heavy dietary pathway. There have been, in addition, dozens of studies debunking the claim that red meat causes disease. The PURE study, P-U-R-E, published in the journal Lancet in 2017, mm. analyzing 140,000 individuals from 18 countries, revealed that, quote, higher carbohydrate intake, not meat and fat, note, was associated with an increased risk of total mortality, and that, quote, higher saturated fat intake was associated with lower risk of stroke. Low. I've looked at this before. Uh, yeah, I, the, and yeah, lower risk of stroke. Now, here's the thing, and this is, just a, this is just a little hint. When you're listening to somebody and it feels like they're about to make a declarative claim, they start out with a very, very broad concept, which is this case of, uh, you know, which caused more disease? Is it this? Is it that? Now, the if I'm not mistaken, and it has been a while since I read the Pierce study, uh, the Pierce study is not directly trying to set out to confirm nor deny the very specific things that Jordan is making it sound like it does, but it is very telling, and you can always tell when somebody's talking out both sides of their mouth when they go from larger health issues to just very specifically eating meat lowers stroke. Not lowers the instances of these health issues, but just stroke. You can always, it, they, they tell on themselves by how they say it. It's fucking crazy. Lower. That is exactly the opposite of what we have been told by the beneficial centralizing agents who task themselves with determining what we, as sovereign and responsible individuals, should put in our mouths. <laughs> Okay. Uh, we're overweight and obese due to high fat, sugar, and salt. Heavily processed foods are really available for lower cost and healthful foods. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's not a mystery. It's not a mystery. But the thing is, is that that is not going to serve Jordan Peterson politically. So instead, everything has to come back to the food pyramid, even though the food pyramid, even in, in and of itself, was enacted during a Republican-led administration. But he's not saying that either, because this is all about woke, global, moralists, blah, 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 blah. How about criticizing processed food mega industry? He's not going to do that. He's not going to do that. What if one of them wants to be a sponsor? <laughs> <laughs> That's so fucking crazy. I don't know if I can keep going on this, man. I don't know. This is. I'm already at like 40 minutes recording, watching this This. Absolute dumpster fire of a video. Uh, uh, let's keep going. So the health benefits of a pure vegetarian and vegan diet are dubious at best. But what of the argument that... Anna so, and that's another one that's fucking dumb because his, his, his evidence is that it's carbohydrates and grains and this, that, and the other thing 
but like a lot of vegans and a lot of it. Excuse me. A lot of vegetarians uh, are much more vegetable based, you know, not necessarily like, oh, I'm replacing all of my meat with bread with fucking croissants, you know, what the fuck? Animal husbandry is killing the planet. Well, the American Environmental Protection Agency estimates that all farming produces only 11 percent of greenhouse gases in the U.S., Transportation produces 27%. Mm -hmm. Livestock accounts for 3%. Okay. And plant-based agriculture, 5%. According to the National Academy of Science... Those are still pretty big. And yeah, we should have more trains. That's probably a good idea. You know, not Hyperloop, because that's fucking dumb. Um <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I, it's, I wonder if the numbers are different if we looked at them globally. I bet you they are. If we eradicated all animal-based agriculture, we'd reduce greenhouse gases by a mere 2.6%. And it is no simple matter, by the way, and perhaps impossible, to manage a diet that is sustainable in the medium to long term by merely dining on plants. Incorrect. Absolutely incorrect. Not even remotely fucking true. But also, nobody's trying to remove your ability to eat meat. <laughs> Maybe they should. <laughs> I don't know. I think it'd be pretty funny to, to see Jordan Peterson shit his pants because he can't eat a fucking uh, slab of beef every fucking three hours. Chew on that. Uh, yeah, if any of you guys... Yeah, yeah, 11% plus 3 plus 5 equals 19%. That is a lot. That is a fucking lot. And there are things that we could do to, like, mitigate that. By the way, if any of you guys, while we're doing this live, want to, like, toss out some some debunking stats in the chat, feel free. I, it's, I'm, I'm working with limited screens at the moment. But here. Ex hodos. The pathway forward. What might we do instead if we chose to be genuinely wise instead of inflicting want and privation upon the world's poor while failing utterly and disastrously to save the planet? Mm. We could begin by assuming here in the West that all those frightened into paralysis and enticed into tyranny by their apprehension of the pending apocalypse have bitten off more than they can properly chew. <laughs> Can't you just talk... Like a regular fucking human being and not sound like you're trying to write poetry about the end of the fucking world. It's so irritating. Have taken on a dragon much more fire-breathing and dire than they are heroic. Have failed entirely to contend with the moral hazard that comes in assuming that the faddish emergency of their overheated imaginations entitles them to the use of power and compulsion. Look in a fucking mirror, dude. What the fuck? You're the one being doomer about this. If your apprehension of the looming catastrophe, whatever its form, has made you into a terrified authoritarian, willing to frighten and compel to get your way, you are simply not the right leader for the times. You're the one that is constantly saying that there's an overwhelming cabal of woke moralists, Marxist... Uh, people trying to like influence it and and uh, like debase men to make them feel miserable and useless, and when they're miserable and useless, to then like cut their penises off and shit like that. Motherfucker, that's you. That's that, that's what Jordan Peterson does all the fucking time. Holy shit, this is incredible. As the unconscious manifestations of your own nervous system telling you that you are just too small for the job at hand are clearly indicating, even to you. We could begin by dropping our appalling attitude of moral superiority toward the developing world. I suggest you start with yourself. Yeah, go for it. We could admit instead that the rest of the planet's inhabitants have the right and the responsibility to move toward the abundant material life that we have enjoyed despite ourselves for the last century. That'd be great. How about we stop fucking with their countries then? That would be that would be awesome. I think that would be fantastic. Allow these countries to uh to to innovate and to grow um without our uh, our interference, you know? You know who who's done quite a bit of it uh, uh yeah, aside from like America and you know 
in the UK. Uh, your buddies in Russia, they sure do that a lot, you know? Uh, no? No? Mm? No? Mm, no. And which has been so entirely dependent on industrial activity and fossil fuel usage. Mm. We could work diligently and with purpose to drive energy and food prices down to the lowest level possible. That'd be great. So that we can ease the burden on the poor oh, sure. and open up their horizons of possibility so that they become concerned as they inevitably and properly will with long-term sustainability. How about we make food free? Let's just make food free. Fuck it. Instead of acting desperately and destructively in pursuit of their next meal. Mm. We could concentrate on an intelligent plan of stewardship instead of anti-human environmentalism <laughs> along the lines of the plans outlined by multifaceted and diligent experts such as Dr. Bjorn Lomborg. No idea who that is. No idea who that is. But, okay, stewardship, stewardship. Who pointed out years ago that we have a multitude of crises facing us mm -hmm. and not just one. Sure. The hypothetically apocalyptic danger of carbon. And that we could spend the money we are wasting killing poor people in a much more intelligent, judicious manner. I, I still, I love, I love that there's this, this argument that he somehow concocted that we're intentionally killing poor people. And, and like the, the line that's directly drawn for it is the impending energy crisis that's going to happen in Europe. And it all comes from Russia, but it's not really Russia's fault because something, something woke moralists. What the fuck? Devoting some resources, for example, to ensuring a stable food supply to poor children in the developing world. Treating malaria, something we can do, and cheaply, and delivering fresh water where it is truly needed. Mm. We could as well work out the details of a truly sustainable agriculture. Oh, the guy that he's quoting got, became internationally known for his best-selling controversial book, The Skeptical Environmentalist. Why am I not I'm not surprised. That That is, hmm... Hmm. <laughs> with the most expert farmers to improve the quality of our soil and air and provide everyone with enough high quality food. So that's all we have to do is just support farmers and then our air will get better and our soil will get better and our food will get better. Wow. That's fucking amazing. That is absolutely fucking... Why did I not think about that? Bjorn Lomborg is a Danish author, statistician, and president of the Think Tank Copenhagen Consensus Center, former director of the Danish government's environmental agency. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's see. Views and work have attracted scrutiny in the scientific community. The majority of scientists reacted negatively to the skeptical environmentalist. He was formally accused of scientific misconduct over the book. The Danish Committees on Scientific Dishonesty concluded in an evaluation of the book that one couldn't prove that Lomborg had deliberately been scientifically dishonest, although he had broken the rules of scientific practice. Uh, huh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Interesting which will most definitely involve animal-based egg. Oh, yeah, yeah. In that he interpreted results beyond the conclusions of the authors he cited. His positions on climate change have been challenged by experts and characterized as cherry-picking. Well, I mean, that's obviously why Jordan Peterson likes him, because Jordan Peterson uh, does nothing but pick cherries. Agriculture. We could bring a halt to the presumption that the state should extend itself by dint of its hypothetical moral superiority to the governance of how we heat our houses and feed and provision our own families. Uh, sounds like you uh, you want to get go small small government, and that'll just fix these big global issues. That's a uh, fucking dumb. We could finally delegate authority to the most local possible of levels, following the principle of subsidiarity, and produce a hierarchy of responsibility that extends necessary purpose to everyone individually interesting so it's like you want in the most local of of areas like say um like communal areas uh where everybody is is trying to produce and make and interact uh that everybody is extended their authority for the things in which they do to contribute largely to that uh that that general area
Huh. If you don't if you don't get the joke, I'm not explaining it. God damn it. At the family and community and state level. Mm. And that serves as a necessary bulwark against the blind and luciferian prideful intellect-based <laughs> top-down tyrannies of emergency and compulsion that will otherwise necessarily reign. Yeah, yeah. It's see environmentalism is luciferian. It's all coming from Satan. We could work out our concerns with sustainability through consensus and in the spirit of voluntary association and free play instead of relying on top-down edicts justified in principle by our misplaced existential terror Mm. and carrying with them the moral hazard of the accrual of unjustified and dangerous centralized authority. We could. I would love to know what centralized authority he's even fucking talking about. That is so wild. It's so great. It's so great when you got uh, people like Jordan and they try and make this like a uh, try and make this this case that there's like this this cabal or or like centralized directive from the left or environmentalism or wokeness, and it's like motherfucker. <laughs> it is it is so ridiculously not like that. Wow. Distribute to everyone their requisite <laughs> responsibility as sovereign actors and could bring them on board with the power of a common vision, one of life more abundant, enough high quality food for everyone, enough energy so that slavery becomes a thing of the past, Mm. enough purpose so that nihilism and decadence no longer beckon. Honestly, if I closed my eyes and I didn't know anything else about what he was talking about, I would think he was a fucking tanky, like gushing about Putin right now. Enough. Reciprocity so that we live in true peace. The generous provision of education and opportunity to everyone in the world. The conviction, to say it again, that policy based on compulsion is misguided and counterproductive. Mm. We could thereby have our cake and eat it too. And so could everyone else. And we could work toward that in a mutual spirit of productive generosity. Sounds like communism. And fair play in competition and cooperation. Or we could let the world go to hell in a handbasket. Blame that disintegration on the very enemies we specified as causal in the first place, Mm. those damned capitalists, and fail to clean up our own souls as we persecute the imaginary wrongdoers responsible for the destruction of our planet. it's it's not like the overwhelming majority of uh, of things that produce the carbon that is compelling climate change, anthropogenic climate change, aren't uh, directly related to uh, capitalistic ventures, businesses. I mean, it'd be embarrassing for Jordan if that was the case. Man, that would suck. Identifying the real danger. We're almost done. Oh, my God. As the psychologist Carl Jung said in the aftermath of the Nazi atrocities and the use of nuclear weapons, Ah. quote, it is becoming more and more obvious that it is not starvation, not microbes, not cancer, but man himself who is mankind's greatest danger. Yeah. For the simple reason that there is no adequate protection against psychic epidemics. Mm, Yeah. Yep which are infinitely more devastating than the worst of natural catastrophes. That great man knew that technological man had a stark choice in front of him to become as ethical as he had become powerful and that a real hell awaited if we refused the challenge. The rate of change is accelerating. Our ability to do almost everything is doubling faster and faster as our ability to communicate and to compute accelerates the consequence of our inner disunity and insufficiency become ever more serious <laughs> as we become individual. This is just like, this is fucking, this is weird LARPy shit. I don't have anything to say to this except it's fucking dumb, but yeah, go ahead. He's almost done, guys. We're almost there. Digitally more powerful. In other words, we must take on more responsibility huh. or else. Or else. If we fail to rectify our personal pathologies of pride, envy, and the willingness to lie, we will find ourselves mired in conflict with the world 
both natural and social, and in precise proportion to our refusal to check the devil within. <laughs> what the fuck? The, this, he's just, he turned into, uh, it, it's now, it's it's on like the, the self-affirmation wellness kind of bullshit, the pseudoscientific garbage fucking master yourself so you can master the world and that's not gonna get russia to leave ukraine alone which is why people are cold and why they're gonna have uh some issues with the supply lines <sighs> this dude has melted his fucking brain so so we have a stark choice in front of us mm. we can reorient ourselves to the cause of truth i would love if you did that yeah i would love if you did that because you're not right now or we can act out the conflict, imposing our self-serving instrumental delusions on the world, bringing about in that manner an external apocalypse mm. that will result in precisely the same judgment. And so, in conclusion, Thank fuck. it's time for all of us, but especially the self-righteous moralizers, mm. to get our individual acts together, okay. to take on some real moral responsibility, instead of falsely broadcasting unearned virtue far and wide and so cheaply and carelessly. I'm just going to point this out again. This motherfucker is paid by the fucking fracking and natural gas industry. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, honestly, he can kiss my fucking ass. Um, thank you very much, Screwbucket, for... Uh, for Looking up that stuff on Bjorn Lomborg, I really appreciate that. Uh, yeah, his education from undergraduate to PhD has been exclusively in political science and nothing to do with climate or weather. I'm not surprised by that, to be honest with you. That uh, that doesn't that doesn't that yeah, of course, a fucking course, absolutely. Um, you know, and it's look. <sighs> It's absolutely exhausting to have to go through this every single time with Peterson because for him, everything is either one of two things. Either it's hierarchies, which is debunked social nonsense that he has repeatedly been shown is not even remotely close to the truth, but his entire philosophy depends on it. Or two, everything is a fucking conspiracy by woke global moralists. Again, also not true. Everything that he's supposed to support is somehow blameless, and actually, it's the fault of them. And it's it it's the it's dangerous kind of uh, like language too, because if you them and you otherwise other otherize them, you can dehumanize them, which is the fucking point. And you know it's the fucking point because and carelessly. Because he's on the fucking Daily Wire. <laughs> That's the fucking point. That's the entire fucking point. All of this is very, very intentional to try and, and, and push politics. It has nothing to do with science. It has nothing to do with like being altruistic about what's happening in the world, with people starving, people going cold. He doesn't give a shit. He doesn't fucking care. It's just more, more pageantry. It's more props. He may be in some way... In his fucked up brain, he thinks he cares. But at the same time, he's not shedding any fucking tears about cold children in Germany. Yet, if you, if you talk to him about, like, dudes who might have gotten catfished on the internet, he'll bawl his fucking eyes out. Which should really tell you about where his priorities are, okay? It's not that hard to really understand about how much of an anti-woke moralist this fucking dipshit skeleton actually is. God damn.